Welcome to the Arizona Wildcat Show, brought to you by Fry's Food Stores. Arizona baseball coach Jay Johnson met with the media on Wednesday and discussed the upcoming series with the Oregon State Beavers. Here's what he had to say. Yeah, it's going to be a great competitive series. It's going to be good to be home. Uh, seven very competitive road games uh, for the last seven, so to get back to High Corbett in front of our fans will be great. Uh, playing Oregon State, you know, one of the best uh, programs in the country over the last 10 years. Uh, we're really looking forward to the challenge. Is Oregon State the best hitting team in the conference? Uh, I hope not. Uh, you know, USC uh, was very offensive last weekend, but we know they're very uh, they're very versatile. They have a lot of athletes, uh, a lot of guys that can really run. Uh, with Ice and Harrison, they have some very proven, experienced hitters. So it's a very well-balanced offense that presents a lot of problems. And so uh, we're going to have to pitch well and play defense. Is it coincidence or is it something you're doing in practice with this pitching staff that they gotten so hot? Three out of the four last week's the pitchers of the week. Well, I, I think it's awesome. I think it's a tribute to a couple things. Uh, it's been a very deliberate work ethic from when we showed up here in August in terms of their throwing program, their strength and conditioning, and then just some improvement on a daily basis. Uh, our pitching coach, Dave Lawn, does a great job. Um, and we have some talented guys that just kind of needed to be we needed to tap into their strengths. I feel like we've done that, and I feel like we're starting to see some of the fruits of that labor now. You're speculating it's like three or four big league arms. You ever sit back and maybe think that? And... You know, they're pitching great right now. And, uh, you know, the emergence of Nathan Bannister is, is a real, real guy, not just a steady innings eater guy. You know, Kevin Ginkle obviously coming into his own over the last couple weeks. Bobby's been great at one point. He was leading the country in wins. Um, you know, J.C. Cloney's been solid. And I think there's some guys that haven't, you know, had a lot of innings that can still make those jumps. And, you know, as we evolve as a program for the rest of the year and then in the coming years, that's going to be really important. Who do you go with on Friday? Uh, Bannister is going to start Friday. Yeah, and then we're going to play it by ear from there. It's one game season uh, for the rest of the way. So it's TBA, TBA. Just kind of go with the hot hand? Yep. Yeah, yeah he's, he's pitched as well as anybody in the Pac-12, and we're going to take it uh, one by one. What do you make of Kevin Ginkle's recent performances, and what are your plans for him? Well, I knew he was going to be talented. Um, he's the first guy that we got when we got the, the job. He's been drafted twice, uh, once by the Giants and once by the Red Sox. He'll be drafted again this June. He's got a great arm. Uh, he's made some strides in terms of his arm conditioning and his body. Uh, the fastball command up at ASU was spectacular. I think he got through that complete game in 90 pitches, which allowed us to use him on Saturday. He came into the game and I think on the second pitch got a double play and, you know, through three innings that kept us, or two and two thirds that kept us in that game. And uh, he's going to be a big part of what we're doing the last four weeks here. Having guys like him and Bobby who can start or relieve, how does that benefit you as a team? Well, it's my favorite kind of pitcher, and, w and when you focus on one game at a time and what's in front of you and not look ahead, those guys are really, really valuable because they can get you off to a good start or set the tone, and they can come in at the tipping point uh, points of every game and you know get you out of some trouble if, if you need to. And both those guys have done that, particularly over the last three or four weeks, and we're going to need them to continue to do that. How would you describe this current Pac-12 race? You guys are right there, and, and Oregon State's just right in the center, right above you there. Yeah, it's, uh, there's, I, every team could go into an NCAA regional and be fine and possibly come out and win it. I think it speaks to the uh, depth of the conference, the amount of good players in the West. It's really no different. I mean, you could look at it and go, hey, maybe it's a down year or it's a weak year. I think it just speaks to the strength, the parity, and every game is very difficult to win. I mean, we've lost a few late, but we've won a few late, and it's all kind of balanced out. Uh, we try not to look at the standings or look at where we're at and just focus on, you know, improvement on a daily basis. That's going to, that has been a good recipe for us. So that's what we're going to continue to do. Do you have to emphasize to the guys, even, even in the midst of a winning streak that, Hey, we still have a long way to go here. You know, this race is really tight. It's far from over. We have to keep grinding that sort of thing. Yeah. I think they, they understand and appreciate how hard it is to win one game. And with that being said, uh, it's our job to try to always keep their mind right and focus on the task at, task at hand. But because they've done that and had some success, um, I think they've bought into that really well. And if we don't play well or we don't win on a particular game, it's not because of their effort or their approach or their attitude. It's because we're playing really good opponents. I mean, we're going to end this year with like 33 of our 56 games are going to be against 
top 100 RPI teams. And uh, we've been successful in those games so far. So you just got to keep going and, and get better today. Try this matchup, low prices and faster checkout. You can count on it at Fry's.